Hello guys and welcome back to the channel. So today this is the next part in the syllogism series but normally um, in the la latter part so in part three four and five I've just kind of gone through some questions on Medify so we're kind of both approaching it for the first time but these are some questions that you guys sent in um, which I thought perhaps I could explain and try to understand. So one of the things that I've said with syllogisms that's really really important is that there are styles of syllogisms. Okay, there are styles of syllogisms and it's really important to be able to understand them. I think one of the best ways to understand them is if you go to the official UK question bank, you can see the different styles that kind of come up on there. And what I mean by style is it's like the way that things are worded or like the different kind of ideas that they teach. So, for example, one style might be that none of A is B and some of B is C. And they ask you some questions about that. Another style might be that like um, all A is B. If B is C, it must be A, that kind of thing. OK, so this is what I mean by different styles. And you only really kind of come to understand and appreciate them and learn the pitfalls and traps for each ones by having having a, having done plenty of practice, but also having tried to f find them and actively search for these different um, kind of uh, types of syllogisms as well. OK, so let's have a look here. So all laws are enforceable regulations. So if an enforceable regulation has been ratified by elected representatives, if it must be a law. So you can see this is what I mean about this is one of those classic styles. So the reason why I know that these are classic styles is because what Medify and MedEntry do is they like rip off the official UK question bank and they make alternatives of questions already on that. Okay, so um, let's have a look at this one. So if a regulation is unenforceable, it cannot be a law. This must be true because all laws are enforceable. Okay, um, okay. so if an enforceable regulation is not a law, it has not been ratified. Well, we know that so basically, it says if it's not a law, it has not been ratified by elected representatives. So an enforceable regulation, you can see, if it has been ratified, it must be uh, a law. But if it's not a law, therefore, it cannot have been ratified. Do you see? Because if, um, if it had been ratified, then it would have been a law. But we quite clearly know it's not a law, so it can't have been ratified, which is why this one is yes as well. OK, so it's just kind of following the um, following the this kind of arrow along like this. OK, cool. Great. Good stuff. So uh, let's keep going. So either either an enforceable regulation is not a law or it has been ratified by um, elected representatives. So remember this, whenever we see all statements, it should make our lives easier because we know exactly what we're looking out for. I'm not going to say the question is easy, but we know what we're looking out for and what we're looking out for. So with all questions, the easiest way to disprove any or question is you try and prove that they're both right or that they're both wrong. OK, so can you say that an enforceable regulation is not a law and it has been ratified by elected representatives? Um, well, that's wrong. OK, because you can see here, for example, like if an enforceable regulation had been ratified, it would have been a law. So both of these can't be true at the same time. But can they both be false at the same time? So can an enforceable regulation be a law and not be ratified? So if you think about it, we know that if an enforceable regulation is ratified, it has to be a law. But it could be true as well that even if it isn't ratified, it can still be a law. Do you see? So this could hold, right? We don't know anything about it. Like It doesn't say that it's only if it's ratified, it's a law. It says if it is ratified, it is a law. Do you see? And it's really, really important, therefore, to make that distinction. So the answer to this is no, and that's because it could be neither of these options. So if you guys are unsure why that is, so let me kind of explain a little bit more about that. And once again, I talk about this a little bit more in one of my other videos. So if I tell you a statement like my hair is black or brown, it has to be one of those. Black or brown. The word or means one or the other, right? It can't be both. So it basically means my hair can't be black and brown. That would be wrong. Okay, black and brown would be wrong. And then it can't be neither black nor brown. That would also be wrong. So what, what, that's what I was trying to do here. I was trying to figure out, can we make it wrong by, if, can they both be right? Can they both be wrong? I found out that it can't both be right, but they both could be wrong. So for that reason, this statement does not hold. Okay, so either an enforceable regulation is a law or it has not been ratified by elected representatives. Actually, so this is quite a... a trick question in terms of if you understand what they're trying to say. So if an enforceable regulation is a law, it must have been ratified by elected representatives, right? So what they're basically saying is either an enforceable regulation must be ratified by elected representatives or it must not be ratified by elected representatives. That's all it is. Okay, uh, elected representatives 
So this question is easier than what it looks. It's literally just saying it's either it's either this or it's not. So it's not true that, so once again, if we were trying to do our idea of making them both true or making them both wrong, that's false because you can't both be ratified and not ratified and you can't be the opposite as well, if that makes sense. So the, this statement is going to be true because when it says either an enforceable regulation is a law, the way that it becomes a law is, like I said, if it's um, uh, ratified by elected representatives um, or it's not ratified, in which case, um, you know, like I said, it's just, uh, the question can be reworded to either it's ratified or it's not ratified, basically. That's the idea here. Whereas I guess you couldn't make that rewording with the one above. Um, because like I said, it could have been neither of them as such. Okay. So just something to think about. Okay. Great. So um, yeah, let's move on to the next question then in that case. So in this forest, so in this forest, not all deciduous trees, so we don't know how many there are, but of them, not all are objects of admiration. All deciduous trees in this forest are 20 feet tall, except Potentilla and Daphne. So some objects of admiration in this forest are 20 feet tall. Okay, so with this one, we know that it says not all of them, um, so we know that some of the, so it says all the deciduous trees are 20 feet tall, except for those two. It could be that there's only three trees. Okay, and therefore there would only be one that's 20 feet tall. Alternatively, it could be that um, the objects of admiration are both Potentilla and Daphne, neither of which are 20 feet tall. So you wouldn't be able to say that. So basically, there's not enough information. This one's no. So I'm creating hypotheticals here. If maple is a deciduous tree found in this forest, it's 20 feet tall. Yes, because we know that all deciduous trees in this forest, apart from D and P, are 20 feet tall. Not all objects of admiration in the forest that are 20 feet tall um, are deciduous trees. Okay, so with this one, um, we don't know. There's simply not enough information. So it says not all objects that are 20 feet tall are deciduous trees. It could be, for example, all the 20 feet ones are the deciduous trees. Sorry, um, no, 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 it's because we don't know enough about the other types of trees. That's what it is, sorry. Yeah, I misread the question here. So, yeah, we, we don't know. There could be another type of tree that's an object of admiration, but also it could be the only deciduous trees objects of admiration. So, um, yeah, there's this is not enough information given. So I can create a hypothetical where I say all objects of admiration in the forest that are 20 feet tall um, are deciduous trees. And that could technically be true, um, but we don't know. There's not enough information, which is why it's no. Okay, so once again, if you guys are struggling a little bit with the idea of creating the hypothetical, I'd really recommend you to check out my first and second videos where I explain the idea in a lot more detail. If a 20 feet tall, the sedgeous tree in the forest is an object of admiration. It is neither Potentilla near Daphne. Um, yes. So from this bit, like this bit doesn't matter. It's 20 feet to sedgeous tall. It can't be Potentilla or Daphne because we know neither of those are 20 feet tall. Potentilla and Daphne are objects of admiration. They're either more than 20 feet tall or less than 20 feet tall. Um, so the bit that's wrong is, so this is something that this bit is right, but we don't know if it's an object of admiration. We can't say that. So therefore it has to be no. So it's partially right, which is one of the tricks that they might use. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah, that's just, just, just something to, to have a think about. That's all. Okay. Great. So, uh, let's move on to the next question then. Okay. So. When someone is a stranger, their motive is inscrutable. If someone is not a stranger, you spend a significant time, amount of time with them. So maybe you guys can have a good try. Okay, so it says, when someone is a stranger, their motives are inscrutable. If someone is not a stranger, you spend a significant amount of time with them. Okay, so if someone's motives are not inscrutable, they are uh, not a stranger. So if you think about it here, you are either a stranger or you're not. Okay, so if your motives are inscrutable, um, sorry, it says their motives are not inscrutable. I must read that bit. So if your motives are not inscrutable, um, so therefore you're not this, okay, so you can't be this side, so remember, you can't be this side, you've got to therefore be on the other side, so they must not be a stranger, okay, so that's why this one is yes, so you can kind of like, with this one, you can kind of almost trace it, follow it around, basically. Some people whose motives are unscrutable um, are strangers, well, 
Once again, look at where the arrow goes. We know that people who's when someone is a stranger, their motives are inscrutable. There's says some people whose motives are inscrutable are strangers. It could be all of them. It could be every person whose motives are inscrutable are strangers. So we have to say no for this one. Okay. When you spend significant amounts of time with someone, they are not a stranger. Um, so for this one, um, this is a really, really weird one. And I'm trying to just make sense of it as such. But um, in the official answers, they've given that the answer is no. But I think... But this is that kind of idea of the ABBA trick. Remember what we said? So we said if someone's not a stranger, you spend significant amounts of time with them. But just because you spend significant amounts of time with someone does not necessarily make them does not necessarily make them not a stranger. Do you see that the arrow isn't going the wrong way? So just because the scenario is different doesn't mean the principles of the arrow don't change. So therefore, I think that's why the answer to this is no, because it could be, for example, that um, you spend significant amounts of time with someone and that they are something else, I guess. But this is a really weird one. It's a bit of a trippy one. I'm trying to wrap my head around it. But I would say, yeah, no, it is difficult, um, but... I guess, go back to your base arrow instinct here. And lastly, if you do not spend significant amounts of time with someone, their motives are unscrutable. Okay, so if you spend significant, so if you do not spend significant amount of time, that means you can't be the right-hand side. So the similar logic that we used for the first question. Um, so you can't be this right-hand side, so you must be the left-hand side, so their motives must be inscrutable. Okay, so the point here is when you're doing these questions, right, so especially with syllogisms, it's about asking yourself, okay, so how was I thinking versus how should I have been thinking? Okay, so like, is this the right way to do it? The right way to approach it? What's the mistake I made? So here, for example, if you got a question wrong or so, it's fine. It's okay to get questions wrong in practice as long as we're not making the same mistakes over and over again. That's what practice is for. Okay, you can't just expect to get every question right immediately. But importantly, like I said, it's about trying to do your best to understand, okay, so why could that have been the answer? Where are, where are they coming from? And sometimes, yeah, perhaps Medify doesn't explain the syllogisms as best, but you can kind of combine it with your arrow uh, method with the arrow diagram and see if you can create like a combo combination of an answer. Okay, so let's have a look at this one. This is the last one that was sent in. So it said, not all the rooms in the house. So in the house, not all the rooms have been mopped but all of them have been dusted except for the kitchen and the attic. So if one room has, room has not been mopped or dusted, it must be the kitchen or the attic. So remember, it's saying that if one room has not been mopped or dusted, it must be the kitchen um, or the attic. So what it's saying here is it's been neither mopped nor dusted. That's what they should have put. Um, I guess the wording is a bit off here. So it's not been mopped or dust, dusted. So the only ones that haven't been dusted are the kitchen or the attic. So if they haven't been mopped either, we're not sure which ones haven't been mopped, but it has to be one of these two, because the only ones that haven't been dusted are kitchen and attic. Does that make sense? So if a room hasn't been, hasn't had either of these things happen to them, it's got to be one of these two, which is why this answer is yes. Okay. And then if there's a living room in the house, it has been dusted. Yes, because everything else is dusted except the kitchen and the attic. Okay. So I think once again, it's about when you're doing these sets, there's normally always one question that catches people out, but it's asking yourself, okay, so what did I do wrong here? How should I have switched it up? And then going from there. Okay, great. So thank you as always for watching, guys. I hope this video was helpful. Uh, I know it's not exactly the normal style of syllogisms that you might see me do when I run through some Medify questions, but nonetheless, I still hope it was helpful. Um, and please do let me know what you'd like to see, and I will see you guys in the next video.